this um um i'm not sure if the recording is running but just give me a heads up because i just see my screen it's running it's running okay, right now awesome. excellent uh thank thanks so um welcome everyone um i'm just going to give a brief overview today how the governance and prime rating works at present so I have to say we uh, are currently working on uh, kind of revamping the whole incentive system as a whole. So it might change in the future. And maybe at the end, we can also go a little bit more in detail into that direction. But I'm going to show you the, uh, I think, main primitives uh, that also will stay with the new uh, system. And um, without further ado, I'm going to give a brief introduction of what prime rating actually is. And actually, one more note, I saw a lot of people from Prime actually within uh, in this call. So if I should um, forget anything, mess anything up, feel free to interrupt me. And also, if anyone has any questions during the call or something's not clear, just interrupt me. And uh, I'm happy to clarify. OK, so what is Prime Rating, actually? Or like, what does Prime Rating do? Like, I would say it's a permissionless incentive system to incentivize the evaluation of the quality and risk of Web3 projects. And we do this by collecting on-chain and off-chain data and interpreting this information in the form of reports. And these reports you can find on our website, which uh, I'll put a screenshot here on the left, uh, where we essentially assign a, um, a rating, uh, which is made out, out of technical and uh, a fundamental score. So the technical we get from DeFi safety, the fundamental as an in-house framework. Um, I think someone raised their hand. Just please talk, because I cannot um, <laughs> accept or not accept. So please go ahead. And if not, the, if, if I misheard, then I'm just going to continue. Um, yeah, please, so, please continue. I think there was some issue with the uh, microphone on some. some OK, OK, OK. Cool. Um, so we do this by applying a community-curated community open source research framework, as I was mentioning. So uh, this is the fundamental framework that I'm referring here to. Why is it community-curated? Because it can be uh, amended by the community. And it's open source. It's uh, available on our GitHub um, or Git book. Um, and we maintain this whole system through a, a gamified, essentially, a leveling system to which I will come in a second. Um, so what is the objective, really? Like, what are we trying to do from a product perspective? And I'm trying to highlight this here, this explicitly, because I think this is the whole thing um, that often gets to get uh, forget, especially for, I think, like service-driven DAOs, um, is like, what are we actually trying to do? Because it's not about the to tokenomics. The tokenomics are there to support the product, in my opinion. And the same with the governance. Like, what are we actually doing? So I think the, the key objective is really the high-quality, reliable, uh, our high-quality, reliable, insightful, uh, fundamental analysis reports um, that, that we are uh, produ producing. This is our product. Um, so how does uh, prime rating work? So we have two tokens. Um, so we have a two token system. So we on one side have RXP, which uh, is a non-transferable token, uh, which essentially uh, is given to um, raters as soon as they do useful work within um, this, this incentive. Um, or like as soon as they do useful work in our and in our system essentially um, so that this is either either for submitting um, a report or for reviewing at present and the other d2t token is currently used as a pure reward token and um, this like I highlighted this in, in this way because uh, in the future system this will change so I'm sure a lot of you already get a lot of ideas of what could be done differently um, so the idea, I think, um, and uh, the, like we have different levels which uh, define essentially the, the function or role you hold within this protocol uh, or within our system. Um, so we essentially are a merit-based system. 
uh, because um, we rely on the experience of more experienced raters to say, okay, something's valid or is not valid. And this is really where this non-transferable RXP token is really helpful because you start as a, at a level zero. So this is open to anyone. Anyone can join our community. Then um, after 25 RXP um, in a new system, 30 RXP, you become a novice and you gain um, like um, essentially just an NFT badge at present. Um, and as you level up, you get more rewards um, as well as uh, additional roles. So with a graduate, for instance, you can become a reviewer. So now you not only can rewrite write reports as a um, rater, but you can also review reports because you have sufficient experience. And um, this continues like with the master where you unlock the governor skill and grass, grandmaster and legend at the moment, uh, these two levels only give you additional rewards, which might change as well, or likely to change, very likely to change in the future. Um, so like how does the uh, prime rating system work? So I'm just gonna go over the product or like the, the process and give you a little bit of an overview of the whole system works. So now you saw the different individual components. So how do we get different roles? And now I'm just want to show a quick overall picture. And for this, I quickly have to exit the presentation or oh, might actually work in here. I think this is fine. So um, we, we start here with, with the rater. The rater picks a project from uh, at present a token list, which is then um, uh, where he writes the first version of the report. The reviewer reviews this report. Um, the rater integrates the feedback. So the reviewers, the expectation that we have to, to the reviewer is um, essentially giving a second opinion, giving a different view, um, uh, as well as like input with regards to the framework um, and uh, also guidance of does it make sense according to the, the criteria we laid out in the framework? Like, does it fit with the scoring or is it off? Uh, stuff like this. Um, the, the rater has the opportunity to pass a, the report back to the reviewer to get a second opinion, to be sure that it passes uh, the, the governor vote. And um, then the reviewer integrates the second feedback, which produces the final report. The final report is then submitted um, to governor vote, uh, which then essentially uh, accepts or rejects the uh, report. And once it's uh, accepted, then it will go into the actual uh, prime rating, into the actual rating score that you see on, on the web page. Um, uh, exactly, and here mostly what you see is um, how the overall picture looks like. So we, we would write these reports and a lot of these, uh, or like the, the API exists, but other products don't exist at the moment, would generate revenue, which would then um, reward ideally the different um, protocol roles. Um, and this is kind of how the overall, let's say, system looks like. Um, so moving on, what governance processes do we have right now? And uh, that's why I also introduced in the beginning really the objective because they heavily focus around the actual product right now. So because we're still quite small and as we gradually increase, I would argue, we will also um, develop processes or probably copy actually other DAOs that do this successfully, like other uh, processes that just manage admin administrative functions such as hiring, finance, um, where you probably just spin up a sub DAO uh, that is responsible for this in particular. So um, what do we have in existing governance processes? So we have a RAP, which is a report acceptance proposal. So this is what uh, where the governance really vote into existence uh, the report into the framework. We have a RIP, which is a report update proposal which is just a, a slimmed down version from the wrap because sometimes, you know, um, a protocol might not have many changes, um, but the report is resubmitted. So that, that's where this makes sense because it's a slimmed down version. Then we have a tip on this is, I think, um, like later to, the, um, to this a little bit more, but I think this is a really 
crucial part actually because it allows the amendment of the framework that we use and i think if this is done right and community driven you essentially capture what prime rating as a community thinks is fundamental value because fundamental value is subjective right like it's what is it it's like nobody knows uh, but essentially by or it's a like i would say it's like a, a greed upon like you agree as a group okay this has value this has not value you can sometimes uh make uh, some sort of val evaluation especially if there's like revenue involved like protocol revenue it's probably the new metric right uh then you can make some sort of evaluation but generally speaking i would say it's always um a shared story and how do you capture this and i think it's only possible through kind of debate and um, I think this, the tip, so allowing the amendment of the actual framework we use to assess projects is super powerful in this. And then there's a the RDR because obviously mistakes happen and it's important to uh, add or like amend reports that have been submitted um, to fix errors or crucially uh, missing information of protocols. So we had that in the past where protocols came to us and said, hey, like this report, there's actually this and this missing. This is really important and would change something. And that's how this developed. Um, are these processes perfect? Probably not. Uh, but I think it's, again, an iterative process. Um, and it will take time to lay these all out. And um, But it, it's a start. And I think it shows the general ideas that we are thinking about. Um, and I think future iterations will make this more effective. So um, again. Just a little bit more detail um, on the actual uh, parameters of these different uh, governance processes. So how does this uh, the wrap life cycle looks, look like? So we have currently, um, and uh, I admit it's, a, it's not um, a finished Web3 stack infrastructure. So there's still a lot of, um, I'd say, like, yeah, centralized components, quite frankly. And uh, the reason for this, I think, is and why I actually think it still makes sense is um, essentially right now just getting the incentive system, right? Like how much is a report worth? How much is the review worth? Uh, all this stuff has to be figured out. And it's just easier if, it's, if you can amend it faster. And uh, we do have a roadmap and stuff like that. Or there's a roadmap in the making for like feature iterations, but essentially how it works, coming back to the actual point. So we have a type form um, and uh, essentially you submit that you um, have written this report and uh, it's now ready for governors to look at it. So you submit this, a dedicated governor will then uh, check the formatting of the report and check whether it's correct, upload it to IPFS, put it up for snapshot, um, after this, add it uh, to snapshot. The other governors will be informed that there's a vote happening. So this is right now happening through Discord in a, uh, with a Discord bot. Then the wrap is uh, queued for 72 hours. Once the vote has passed, uh, it's implemented into the, um, impl or it's carried out by prime governors or stewards that upload the actual report on, onto the web page. And uh, the voting specifications are so like only RxP holders can vote, right? So we, as I mentioned earlier, we have um, governors who need to have 200 RxP. Um, at, at the present, on at least one governor needs to accept the report. So this is also something that really changes in the, in the new system. Um, and for a vote to pass, 51% uh, uh, or like 50 dot point one percent at least have to be achieved and uh, it the, the vote obviously can happen all the time like all, t uh, all year around so a tip uh, i mentioned before what it is it's a template improvement proposal so this follows a slightly um different framework and actually one last thing on the last side um it's the same for the rub right like there, there were two different processes rub and rub they exactly function the same way because uh, the rub is just a slimmed down version. Sorry, just for completeness. So uh, the tip is a template improvement proposal. Um, and the life cycle for this is essentially 
you would start an informal discussion, just a sentiment uh, uh, check, um, which usually happens within the forum or in Discord. Like usually, um, the the like the really the true process, I would say, usually a rater raises actually a question, says, "Hey, how uh, do I answer X, Y, Z?" Like this doesn't make sense or something like that, and then a discussion around that starts quite naturally within our community, and it's driven by an actual, I would say, usually a use case because you suddenly have a case, like you evaluate the protocol, and suddenly, oh no, the governance section doesn't make sense. Like it's a good model, but it would score badly in the fundamental score. And like through these things, um, the actual issue comes up, and then a debate um, happens, um, which is then usually not uh, like a sentiment check as such is not often needed and then it's, uh, it's formalized in a uh, on the forum where it's a little bit further discussed and refined we have a dedicated template for this where you would then just outline essentially what is why why do you want to change it how do you want to change it um, then after posting it uh, you would inform other uh, raters and reviewers about the forum submission like everyone will give their input there will be 48 hours for as minimum discussion period. Usually it lasts longer, I would say, uh, from my experience thus far. Um, if there is sufficient discussion, um, uh, like if there, there's like, you usually reach this point where no new inputs come in, like the soft consensus, I would say. And um, after that, you uh, essentially create or formalize this tip on a snapshot where it's then again up for 72 hours. And once it passes, um, a governor or steward will actually amend the template that we have on our website um, for raters to use to evaluate projects. And that's, that's how this uh, changes essentially. Um, the voting specification, uh, it's, it's the minimum of 50 RSP is uh, participated to vote. So there's also a question, um, like, is, is this the right parameter? I think, like, um, to be perfectly honest, sometimes it's a little bit um, magic numbers, like, because who, who knows what the, the true, the, the right value is, right? Like, it's a lot of experimentation. That's why I think, especially in, like, early days, um, we should not get, um, especially if, if uh, you are, trying new concepts. I think it's really important to stay flexible and then start um, formalizing and making these processes uncorruptible. So that, that's my personal take. I'm happy to debate this also later if, if someone um, feels differently. Um, so the, the quorum is 25% of the circulating RXP to pass it needs 51. Uh, Point percent um, for four votes. Voting cap it can happen all year round. However, um, it, a, a usually it's uh, it takes one to two weeks to implement. So it's usually not recommended to do around a season or a rateathon, which are two events where we specifically focusing focusing on like for instance an area like the metaverse to rate uh, protocols in this category. So um, there's implementation rounds um, usually uh, at the end of uh, the each quarter, essentially just to not uh, collide with the mentioned seasons as well as rated tones. And the RDR, so the report dispute resolution uh, process is um, outlined here and actually Salome is in the call or I saw her earlier, I'm not sure if she still is. So this was uh, pioneered by her. And um, so if, if I should get anything wrong, um, she can definitely correct me. So essentially what happens is there's a RDR request. Um, so this can be um, started, I believe, from uh, any protocol. Uh, there's a discussion phase, then the governor set up the um, RDR, like the RDR or snapshot. Uh, where it goes into a voting period, again, like the, the 72 hours that we always have. If the dispute claim is correct, uh, the fundamental report will be resubmitted. So this means it will also go through the whole uh, voting process again. And if the um, 
yeah, uh, and um, if the dispute claim is false, essentially nothing happens or a new uh, process has to be started. Um, the voting specifications, again, RxP, a minimum of 100 RxP is required to vote. So I think like the rationale behind here is that it's often um, for newer raters, it's quite difficult to actually make a judgment on this. And so we just want to have a little bit more familiarity with the uh, framework because you could have um, cases where maybe a score is actually disputed. Like sometimes it's uh, also uh, just pure information incorrectness, but sometimes it could also be something like, okay, like the score is way off or something and it passed governor vote, but actually this can't be right. And then um, you need this minimum understanding of how, uh, how does our framework actually work. So that's why it's set to like, I believe the um, uh, review level. So uh, a core, core, uh, at least one governor has to accept it. So 200 RSP, uh, 50.1 participation, uh, participating votes need to vote for, and the vote can happen all year round. So um, it, it always can be challenged. Okay, um, so, I'm going to actually pause here for a second um, uh, because I think this is kind of like what we have right now. And I can also go, um, like, if there's a question about other functions, happy to answer that. Um, but I think, like, this is what we have right now. And um, if there's still time, interest, can also think, uh, like, present a little bit, like, a few concepts of what we're thinking about, um, where this whole thing can be going potentially. So yeah, like uh, I would see if there's any question right now and then uh, go on. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Thank you for uh, the uh, presentation. So anyone from the audience have any questions to the current process of prime rating? And please be critical, like come and rip this apart. So I, I might have actually some, and maybe someone will check later. So you have this, uh, if I'm correct, you have like two types of reports. One is like technical report and one is like governance report. But if I understand correctly, like the processes for governance for the reports are just like generic for both reports. Is that correct? Uh, so the the way it currently works is because we have to be like for the technical report part we have actually a partnership with DeFi safety so it's entirely handled actually by them and we just combine the, the score so right now it is um that we mostly focus on the fundamentals so we look at uh, the value proposition tokenomics the team governance and uh, regulatory whereas the technical so smart contract risk is assessed by um DeFi um safety you have their own process. OK, that makes sense. And from that perspective, can you as a DAO or like uh, also dispute their uh, kind of results, or you need to just accept whatever they send to you? That's a really good point. I think like for now, actually, I would say, I, I love that point, by the way. It's uh, something I probably haven't paid enough uh, appreciation to, um, or haven't thought of enough about. But um, it's it's something we have no process in place, I think. Like you could challenge it in within their Discord, but there's no such thing as, oh, you say, okay, this is wrong and you can come to us. So like that's, I would say, just a missing process, but that's awesome. So thanks for challenging this. Yeah, so basically it works like Oracle. You just accept whatever the Oracle We do accept, yeah. But then okay. again, like we also, like initially this this uh, DeFi safety and prime rating were like very very close so it's kind of um like we're familiar with their work like we know what they're doing and it's not like we just say oh like it's not like we uh taking from coin gecko like the safety score or something you know mm -hmm. so my another question okay i see shirak uh, want to ask questions so i will wait with mine Sure, go on. Hey, Punkar, hi. Uh, hey, Thomas, hi, thanks. A great presentation. Uh, just one small question. Um, so you showed a chart where you said there are multiple levels of contributors. And at each level, if you contribute, you earn something, right? Uh, 
so so and then each uh, level is defined by a certain number of tokens so if you hold those number of tokens then you qualify to become that level of contributor uh, that that's correct right i i got that chart right yes uh, essentially you unlock a new skill like you can right. take a different role in the the protocol yeah right but what i also realized was that the number of tokens you need to kind of unlock a new level is way higher than what you would earn if you were to deliver that service in the in the earlier uh, level right so are you are you kind of incentivizing users to buy those tokens to move on to the next level is that the intent there uh, no because, so other because, yeah um no, just to clarify right like these levels are unlocked um, as you see here is like requirement rxp so the rxp is the reputation token so this is something you can't buy this oh, is okay. you earn this by either doing a review or writing a report so this is sweat that you have to put into um it's not purch purchasable so the report said once you do a report you get 10 rxps right but the next level is yeah. about 50 rxps or something so the idea is you have to do five reports and then only you move on to the next level. So that in kind of you kind of broken the number of effort by by that stacking. Uh, yes, the like the more if you do a certain number of reports, yeah, you unlock a new level. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Makes sense. Thank you. So I actually have a follow up question on that because you know non transferable tokens are not that common let's say in the governance so what was your kind of overall experience with like introducing this uh experience tokens and like like not able to kind of be transferable actually like what the community kind of how they react what they appreciate maybe about it what, what they saw like as a downside so i, I should uh, maybe elaborate also a little bit on this rxp um token so it's a quite a special token actually and i should have probably mentioned this in the in the beginning and please don't ask me about the smart contract specs because i i don't know exactly how this works but uh, it was developed by i believe luke and a couple of other people so luke the um, founder of prime dow um, but essentially it's a token that you can also withdraw again so how we do this is by essentially using the multisig and saying batch mint or batch burn. So, um, and I'm going to answer the question in a second, but it's essentially we can also withdraw it. Right now we don't do this, but in later functions, this will also, uh, like in, in probably in the iteration of the system, there probably will also be a, a removal of that introduced. Because, uh, and I think this, this makes sense in, in a way, because we're talking about skill, right? You learn and you forget, uh, which is just like unavoidable. And the token itself doesn't hold value. Uh, it does affect you like your earnings, but it doesn't hold value. And I think you can play around with this really interestingly. And I think, like I haven't seen this in any other DAO to be honest, but I think this is something really cool. And I, I would imagine actually that this is something like that for this use case makes a lot of sense. Coming back to the actual question, like how does the community react or ha has um, reacted? So, I mean, I think this really has been in the, pl in the place since the beginning. So everyone who joined the system uh, opted in to be subject to this uh, RxP um, thing um, or like RxP token. So I think, uh, it generally, th th there was never really a, a conflict. I think, yeah, I, I think um, generally I personally like it. And maybe to give you my backstory, I started as a contributor. So I wasn't always on the core, core team. I was writing reports myself and then uh, gradually um, started contributing also to things beyond research. Um, yeah, so, and I personally really like the system because I think it makes sense. I don't know yeah, if I fully answered your question. Yeah, yeah, uh, kind of. Like, I think uh, I'm pleasantly surprised, not surprised, but like, I think I like to hear that like the community actually likes the system because 
I believe the current governance system would be having other DAOs, like the tokens transferable, and then large token holders usually owns all the like voting power in the way that they have more like capital to actually afford it. In this way, like you need to build up your uh, score. So that leads me to another question. Was this token also distributed to like core team members and founders just for their like contribution to the product? Or did they uh, have to also like submit the reports and build it up? Okay, uh, so I think how, I need to how deal with Basically, how the core team is actually included in the governance. Like, are they participating yeah. in the governance or not? Uh, again, like an amazing question. Um, uh, so I think in the beginning, um, a lot of people actually wrote reports. Uh, I think you, at some point, you could also earn RXP for like different research work. So for instance, if you would help to actually build one of the frameworks or something like that. Um, I think under the new system, we're actually pivoting away from this completely. And I think this makes sense because, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a merit-based system. So the person with the relevant skill should be eligible for the, the governance function, in my opinion, uh, like for the, the, the given governance function. So this doesn't work, obviously, for each uh, use case. But I think in this in a use case where you have experts, or ideally experts, I think it makes a lot of sense. So having said this, what will happen in the future? So right now we just have RXP, right? Um, the, some uh, core team members also have some RXP. Uh, some got, got this by uh, earlier, uh, let's say, uh, other contributions uh, towards uh, the actual assessment of the frameworks. Like So for instance, as I mentioned, the building frameworks. But in my opinion, this doesn't really make sense. I think it should be really exclusively for report writing and reviewing. And I would even go further. And I think like this is at least in the uh, incentive revamp group that we have been working on. I think this is actually quite accepted. It should fractal down into different categories as well as uh, domains, right? So for instance, if I have 100 RXP in DeFi, should I also be an expert in the metaverse? Probably not, right? So the, you can just break down this RXP into uh, different domains. And I think this is where the direction will go and where I personally think prime rating will go, that we break down um, essentially into sub DAOs that focus on a certain theme, and have then these um, communities forming. So for instance, we have a metaverse lending market sub DAO that has its specific RXP and can introduce the system. And I think through that, you get like a really cool coverage, but maybe we all see, maybe there's a, a catch to this. And I think especially if we then come back to like, um, like more aggregated, like, uh, um, like more aggregated decisions, how do you integrate this back in? And like, what are the attack vectors? I don't fully understand that yet, but I think it, this is the direction we definitely should go, like specialized RXP. And then you can also introduce stuff like, um, okay, should there be something for the core team, like operational RXP or like HR RXP? And I think that's, that's uh, I don't know, like that's what I've been um, thinking about. No, this is super interesting. And actually we might have, next week someone talking about kind of forkability of DAOs uh, and you might have read this article uh, which has been published a few weeks ago uh, I think it's called go fork yourself Blobo, is that correct uh, I, th I think I haven't actually read it but I saw it and it, someone shared it in the telegram group right yeah it is so. called go fork, don't fork, go fork yourself yeah I would and I, I, I think yeah, check it out. I think this is interesting concept. Like, let's not build like super DAOs, which are like super large and do everything, but rather like enable to basically for the DAOs to like the minimum kind of product which they can focus on and they can really like then like uh, agree and something. So uh, this is a really interesting concept and uh, I, I like that kind of way of thinking. Uh, so are you actually enabling this like uh, the like forking your model 
for other DAOs or like sub DAOs in your system? Or is it something what they need to like develop a little? I, I mean, right now, um, I think the system is just not forkable because the infrastructure is not in place. So I think like we right now still have to kind of balance um, the, the reward system, but I think in the long term for sure, because I think that's in general like the the beauty about the space, like the forkability, because it allows people to have a choice to opt out if they want to. And I think uh, choice, just generally speaking, is can be quite powerful or empowering to the individual. But uh, so to answer the question succinctly, because I tend to talk too much, um, so apologies for that. Um, essentially, short term, I think no, but not for, oh, we want to keep it private, but just because the system isn't there yet. Um, long term, yes. Excited about that. I think uh, it would be a great thing to uh, fork or copy uh, and use. Uh, it seems like your system, uh, thanks to nature, I think also thanks to nature of the product works very well. Uh, so maybe last question from my side. Uh, I saw you have the quorum uh, on like those proposals and like that uh, to pass, it seems to be at least 50%. Do you have currently like any issue with engagement or like basically ev everyone who holds uh, RXP, uh, basically participate in the government no no we definitely have issues but i think in part it's also because um like as i mentioned we're working right now on uh, kind of looking at the incentive layer um of the system so that all stakeholders are incentivized right so right now like because it gradually grew so um to maybe give also a backstory of the development started with like obviously uh um a couple of people that were trusted that were just uh, being paid and then gradually people came in but in the beginning um governors were essentially trusted entities so that were um voting stuff in that and it was believed like that, that they could be trusted right so they weren't actually paid or paid through other means so for instance they were on uh, the payroll of uh, prime DAO, and then would just get paid their, their monthly salary and would do this as like kind of a side job so what we're doing right now in the, the revamp is incentivizing also governors. So including them into, uh, yeah, a, a pro or like, um, for instance, giving them a share for each passing re report. And I think this is going to be really interesting. I can go into a little bit into what we have thinking, like or what we are thinking about. So I think there's multiple steps to this as well. Um, but uh, yeah, like um, it, it should be something that's self-sustaining so that the revenue that comes in from the product should then also go to them. Uh, and maybe, uh, uh, because I think it's going to be, like it, it is interesting to you guys, but uh, initially it's probably going to be um, still somewhat, um, well not, not centralized, but I think not scalable. So we probably what will happen is everyone who um, is, has more than 200 RXP in our community can um, let themselves be elected. And then we have kind of this governing council. And then you can uh, play around with incentives that you say, OK, um, so you get rewarded X amount per reward, uh, re re per report, but uh, it's only conditionally paid out if you participate in 75 of the votes. We can do something like, um, OK, each we essentially count each governor would get rewarded each uh, for each vote. So let's say we have four governors, they all would get 150. So we have a pot of 600, but only three participate. Then we could split this pot of 600 across these three and the not participating one loses out. Um, I, I'm personally never a friend of paying for voting. Uh, like I get a little bit nervous in this and uh, I think it's to be seen if this actually works out as we intend because i think as soon as you pay for governance uh, like governance participation you get participation but not necessarily quality and quality is here extremely important but i think given that these people have worked their way up to 200 rxp they somewhat staked um or put a lot of time and sweat into uh prime DAO or prime rating i believe um that 
we might not run into this issue, but it's to be seen. And I, I don't know. Um, but it, it's something we definitely have to monitor once we implement like the new system. It's uh, amazing. Uh, I, I agree with you uh, on that because uh, I think like paying for vote is just give you really the vote. Uh, however, it won't give you opinions. It won't give you other other stuff on that. There are probably ways how to incentivize like quality contribution, but yeah, like simple poap or something won't so solve it. Uh, yeah. I, I think I think uh, yeah, we are aligned there. So actually, it's just like I am mindful that we have only fifteen minutes, and you wanted to talk also about the future. But anyone from the audience have maybe some uh, some question to Thomas or what we have discussed. Uh, I have a question. I just want to clarify that. Uh, um, so uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, uh, the governor got uh, incentive by, uh, from the project uh, he vote for. So it seemed to me it would have sort of a, a conflict of interest uh, because I thought um, the really is the DAO uh, should uh, you know pay for the governor vote for the proposal rather than the governor is a uh, sort of a uh, benefits from the proposal itself it gonna you know create a motivation that the governor really want to vote for this uh, you know uh proposal want it be want it become uh, effective because he gonna he gonna benefit from it so if that's the case or or me, maybe i i misunderstand you earlier so okay let, let me just see if i got this right um essentially you're saying um paying the governor per report would incentivize him um, for uh, okay, like maybe okay, uh, okay. Let, first, me let me see if I got it right. So essentially, moving the governor away from the payroll um, would uh, lead to the incentive that they uh, would change the incentive structure because when the governor is now being paid per report, he's incentivized to. Um, essentially get as many reports through as he can or like because i think there might be the, the misunderstanding um or like wait can you clarify again i just want to be sure that i um answer the question correctly yeah i, I just want to know that uh, uh uh which where is the source to pay for the governor is that uh, the DAO itself or is the uh project or you know uh behind ah, the board gotcha okay um, yeah, so it, it would be the DAO itself. So how it would work to go back to the, well, this is the idealized example, because right now this is obviously not balanced. But we have these different products. They would pay into the DAO treasury, and then the DAO treasury would pay for each of the protocol functions. So if that makes sense. And maybe one thing to add, like even if the governor now gets paid, they, they'd be uh, paid, to, paid to vote, like they paid regardless whether they vote yes or no if that makes uh, sense like as long as they participate yeah yes yeah, so th that makes sense now so it's a, basically the governor is paid for the quantity of the voting rather than the passing of the voting yes That's exactly it. exactly thank you also uh, i just want to uh, if there's any other background materials we can find anywhere for this because i, I feel like it's very interesting uh, um good question i i'm not 100 sure like definitely check out our uh git book but it, there's mostly still the old uh documentation so of the old system in there and it's uh a lot of like a lot has changed um the other place you can visit if you specifically want to look at um prime rating uh, is i think our forum where we have like some discussions uh, going on i think that's quite informative um as well um and i can also i'm happy to share this presentation as some resource of what we are thinking about um i mean i shared it already <laughs> but i i have to be honest uh, like off the top of my head of for instance if you if you're talking about like uh, academic literature or something of that sort uh, i wouldn't have anything um at at my like right and uh, up my sleeve <laughs> essentially but yeah Awesome, thank you.
perfect so let's go for, to the future okay so the the future is just a, a little bit and it might get a little bit confusing so do um because at, at the moment we're still ideating a lot right like we thinking okay does this make sense and some things might not make sense and it's all still really fluid and it, there's also not much that i actually added in into this uh, presentation but um I, i'm just gonna go for it and if it becomes unclear or something doesn't make sense just just ask so that we the idea is to to some extent change the function of the actual tokens and there's also some other implications here um that might make this possible or might not make it possible but um rxp yeah as i mentioned already like later on we definitely want to like see this uh break down in granularity to to allow the main expertise in certain specific areas um it should be like i mean it's uh, still a measurement of commitment to prime rating as well as expertise and knowledge uh, it also also um essentially defines the roles uh, or still de if, uh, defines the roles and uh, i think it what what becomes really interesting in in that stage is that you can think about hey where can um over what should rxp govern so what I mean by this is like what processes should um, should be controlled um, through this this token because I think sometimes you also get uh, a conflict in interest um, by people having this token. So what I'm thinking about in particular, I think this is like one of the changes to um, or. It, or why does it potentially make sense to change the utility of the transferable token is um, if we have RXP holders vote over, uh, for instance, strategic decisions or parameters that make it easier or um, harder to submit a report, that might be to like a, a conflict, right? So that's why it could make sense to um, and maybe this is also just a side comment so probably what will happen is that um prime rating might uh, spin out out of uh prime dao and then there obviously would be a need for like well not obviously but there might be a need for our own token i mean a token is not necessary for dao like i'm definitely not a proponent of this but yeah i think in this sense it could make sense and if we would have for instance this um token um like this transferable token you, the holders of that could make decisions for instance over um who like over strategic decisions so for instance uh if we fractal down like now rxp for instance into uh, metaverse lending uh, rxp should this be a sub down should this be, uh, get funded and i think then it becomes uh like yeah you get into this what 1kx and peter pan talk about like this demand and supply where you can uh, fund or where the DAO starts to focus on capital allocation. And I think then you really get uh, into an interesting area where DAOs can really outcompete uh, centralized entities just by scaling more rapidly and having, uh, I think, a different incentive structure of the workforce behind it. Um, so the why why would you want to hold rate uh, if we introduce the token right for protocol revenue as well as maybe electing the governors that I mentioned right like we if we have a system where um, the governors um, uh, and this is a little bit controversial um, but I, I will go into this a little bit more so for instance the governor vote like so who approves the report could be facilitated by this rate token and uh, this could be uh, or could lead to the situation where you have whales controlling it but it depends on how do you issue it so the idea behind rate would be um, if we would do this would be a inflationary token and the issuance of rate is given exclusively for protocol function so for raters uh, that submit a report or for reviewers or for governors so if and i don't know if this works out by the way or like if this makes sense um but if these individual really contribute and have sweat uh let's say have earned this this money 
then they will accumulate um, most of the rate and are likely to be somewhat incentivized to not uh, behave maliciously. And I think this mirrors a little bit like a cooperative where people really earn this, this ownership. Um, I don't know, like a, a, a lot is still in the making. I um, kind of see 10,000 counter examples right now shooting in my head while I'm just speaking. Um, but yeah, so this is something we, we talked about um, or th thought about. Um, and I can also uh, like go in the mirror board, but I'm not sure how much time we have left. And uh, otherwise, I can also talk a little bit about uh, some stuff that I think is just not clear yet. Um, but maybe I stop here as well and just leave it up for a little bit more discussion because I felt like this wasn't as clear as the rest of the presentation. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has questions, I would pause here real quick and uh, see if there are any. So any question from the audience? Or did yeah. I lose everyone completely because I felt that was a little bit... Um... No, it was really informative. Um, okay. I was just kind of curious what your engagement rate was. Uh, engagement rate in, in what particular? In terms of like people participating, like in the voting process? Ah, okay. Um, you mean for, for ins okay, so I mean the governor election right now is not live yet, right? So we have um, the dif different votes. It's like quite hard to say like which area we, uh, like it's hard to generalize right now for me because we have like these different processes, right? Um, so I, I couldn't couldn't tell you. I think for governor vote right now, I would say it's a fairly low participation, um, just because it's not incentivized, and we have to change something. So it's kind of like this um, benevolent, like it's charity by um, essentially a good meaning um, or like trusted um, governors, and it's like trusted members of the DAO, which is slowly starting to change um but in terms of the others i think we do get some participation i couldn't tell you actually i couldn't tell you i think that's uh, the true answer before i talk around the um the yeah the point so just to be mindful of time uh we have last two minutes uh, and maybe some people need, need to drop and or some people are already dropping uh, before their uh, next call. So, Thomas, thank you very much for the presentation. I think I still need to better understand actually the future uh, token, like the rate yeah. and how everything's put together. We don't have time today, but we will definitely find some time maybe in some future sessions where we can talk about more like this, let's say, how we want to implement the future uh, governance uh, system. And maybe we can also compare it to other systems which are already in place. And uh, then we can have discussion on that. So I can definitely envision some, some another presentation. So thank you very much uh, for that. Thank you, audience, for paying attention. Uh, do you want to put any closing notes? Um, so, I honestly, I would love love to do this. So uh, we're working right now heavily on like just finishing this up. So uh, I'd be happy to present the future system from scratch and also, which I think is super interesting potentially for some, uh, how we want to implement it, like the, the stepwise roadmap. Because um, usually you can't deploy these systems at once. Um, and apart from that, I would just say like, if you have any, uh, questions or if you want to talk about ideas or what you think is cool like just reach out to me i'm xm3 ban everywhere pretty much so on twitter on discord and telegram and yeah happy to chat thanks for having me perfect thank you for coming and presenting and yeah definitely we should do another session so you can also get some feedback from the community on their future plans I love that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Just next week. Uh...